Hello YouTube. Today I wanted to show you my personal snow thrower. The main purpose of this video is to show you how I motorize the chute actuation system. Uh, but I, while I'm at it, I'm going to show you around the rest of what I did because some of this is things that you probably would be interested in doing to your machines yourself. Uh, a little bit of history. I got this machine for free by the side of the road. Someone had thrown it away because the shear pins that hold the impeller, which is right about in that space, had both broken off. So $2.50 and maybe an hour of my time later, I had a working snow thrower. And by the way, this is the, probably the best snow thrower I've, uh, I've ever owned. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's still painted uh, red. Um, I did take the whole thing apart, sand off all the superficial rust, and uh, put it back together again. And while I was at it, I put never seize on every bolt so I don't have to worry about uh, anything freezing on me or rusting together on me. So let me show you some of the other things that I've done before getting the uh, motorized system I, I did. So first thing, um, right off the bat, uh, the uh, fuel shutoff was broken. I put a new one in. This is a necessity, not so, you know, pretty basic, but you know, there it is. I also put in a fuel filter for the same reason, just because I don't want to have any dirt getting into the carburetor in the engine. Um, I mentioned I took the engine, this whole thing apart. While I had the engine off, I put this piece of plastic between the engine and the body. Uh, and this is just, I, I cut up a piece of a bag for some cat litter. Um, the reason I did this is because I wanted to prevent any cathode anode corrosion between the block um, and the base. So this uh, plastic keeps a little bit of separation between the two, you know, different metals because this block, I believe, is cast iron and the and the and the, the machine is steel. Um, so you end up with a little bit of electrical connection, electrical uh, uh, contact between there, which you know makes it rust out a little bit more. I didn't want to have to deal with that, so I put that there to make sure that doesn't happen again. The next thing I did, let's see, if we, let's see it here, is the impeller modifications. I put some rubber strips on the tips of all three of the impeller blades so that it closes the gap between the impeller and the housing. Uh, this is a video, it's got that from a video that 65 Ford, it's a YouTube channel, 65 Ford did that uh, maybe eight years ago now, and it is probably the best modification that I've made to this machine. It works really, really well, so if you're on the fence about doing it, I highly recommend uh, making that modification. The next thing is that the hinge uh, for the deflector chute was also cracked. So I took it off and went to the hardware store, picked up this, uh, this hinge. It's basically the hinge that you find for like an outside fence and slapped it on there. It is way, way oversized, but uh, I will never have to worry about uh, the hinge coming off again or breaking again. Uh, the only downside to that, and you can kind of see it here and again here, is that because of the geometry of the hinge, it leaves a little bit of extra space on the edges. So what was happening was snow was coming up the chute and getting caught in the wind and blowing back to, uh, in my face. I didn't like that, so I put this piece of Lexan on there to stop that from, from happening. Uh, next up, lighting. I did have some, I did put this incandescent bulb in uh, maybe a couple of years ago, uh, and it works okay. Uh, but I recently just got this uh, LED system from a discount, uh, har uh, a discount, well, Harbor Freight, uh, a discount uh, hardware store uh, for about 25 bucks. And it is super bright to the point that I'm probably going to remove this one because it's just silly at this point. Um, so now we get into the actuation system. I've motorized the, uh, the deflector as well as the side to side motion. And I know the reason, the first thing you're thinking is why? Why would you put a motor on this? And the reason is because uh, I eventually want to get a uh, snow thrower cab for this uh, because I am tired of having snow blow back in my face. So with the hand crank system, which would have been right about here, that was okay to manipulate, but the up and down, the deflector, you know, you had to unscrew, you know, the nut from here, lift it up and then put it back, you know, do all, doing all this, you know, right in front of you which is fine if it's open, but once I put a cab on there, I won't be able to reach around, so I'll have to come around, step forward, do what I need to do, and then come back again. I didn't want to have to do that, so instead I just motorize it and put all the controls right here. So here's a switch for the light, here's a switch for the side to side, and here is a switch for up and down motion. So uh, as I said, this is the main thing that I wanted to show you today, um, and the reason I did this is because these videos uh, for lighting and, and, and particularly the uh, uh, the motion of the of the deflector typically fall into two categories. 
Uh, you have the people that do this on a compact tractor, which obviously this is not, so it doesn't really apply. And then there's the people that do this um, on a snow thrower, but they put a battery in, and I didn't want to have to deal with, you know, adding a battery and charging the battery and worrying about whether or not the battery's going to charge and whether, not, you know, whether it's good or not. Uh, so I just powered everything off of the engine. Uh, this is a nine horsepower Tecumseh engine, and it does have a stator. Here's a wire for it. Uh, so the first thing I did was take off that proprietary connection that Tecumseh uses and put on just a regular terminal connection that you can find uh, almost at any anywhere that sells electrical supplies. So the engine is putting out AC current. So one leg is coming out through the wire, the other is coming through the you know through the nuts into the base and everywhere else. So this wire goes up through the frame and into the box that I just showed you. Uh, this is just an outdoor hardware box, a blank. So I put the holes in. Um, so, you know, this box is maybe five, six bucks or so, again, at the local hardware store. Uh, so the power comes in, um, the, the, you know, the, the one leg comes in here, the other, um, what I did was I sanded down around this screw uh, so that there would be electrical contact between the screw and the, uh, and this, this plate uh, to carry the other leg of the electricity. And then on the inside, I have a little, just a terminal block that's uh, a terminal that's uh, screwed, that's connected to uh, the other end of that bolt. So that's how I'm getting electricity inside the box. From there, it goes to rectifier, from there it goes to a rectifier because again it's AC coming out of the engine and I need DC to power the LED lights and the uh, on both motors um, and if you're not sure what that is don't worry because I, I will have a schematic of what I did at the end of this video uh, so I'll show you exactly how it's done and how it's connected okay so again so the AC is coming in here and it goes into a rectifier to convert that AC to a DC signal so now you've got you know it's 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 not steady DC, it's you know, going from zero to 12 volts you know, as time goes on. Um, it's not steady, and if I left it like that, the lights would most likely flicker. So again, I didn't want to deal with that. So coming out of the rectifier, I put a capacitor in there to smooth out the signal. So now it's it's more close to uh, it's, it's closer to uh, it's closer to a, a true DC signal. All right, so those are the outputs. Right, so now that I have DC output, I connected the light. You know, the light, the wires all come inside the box. Um, they connect there and then come back out to wherever they need to go. So from that rect from that capacitor, um, the output side of the capacitor is DC that's connected to the to the light through this switch. Um, and then I also have this motor, which I picked up for ten dollars from a, a, a scrapyard. Uh, this is the window actuator for some random car. I don't even remember a Mitsubishi, I guess. Uh, maybe I don't even remember. Um, but for ten bucks, it works just fine. So. As you can see, I repurposed the bracket that was used to hold the manual chute uh, turning system. Uh, so that's holding on one side. On the other side is this. I picked this up again from the local hardware store. It's just, you can buy this in like four or five foot lengths. Um, just a sheet metal with holes drilled in, which is nice and convenient. Um, it works just well. It, you know, so it's easy to, to cut and it bends fairly well. So I just wrapped that around the frame and, and connected the other side of this of this uh, here to it, so this isn't going anywhere. It's held well enough to uh, to do what it what I need to do. <clears throat> On the other side of that, it took me about five drill bits to get to break through the output shaft from this system, uh, so I could put a pin through it. Uh, this, I believe, is three eighths inch shaft. Uh, there's a connector on here. A, 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 a connector, a connector. I forget what you call these things. Um, it's basically a long, a long nut um, that I put on here, and then with a regular nut to back it up so it doesn't spin on me. And then drill the hole through it, and then there's the other pin. Uh, on the other end, I just drilled a hole through the rod and used the existing coupling, uh, you know, user, universal joint to get to the uh, to the uh, to the chute. The, the trick to this was this coupling going from the motor to the shaft. What I ended up doing was using PVC pipe. <clears throat> uh, so what I ended up doing, um, like I guess a PVC pipe. This is a little too small to, or a little too big to fit into the PVC pipe as it came from the store. So what I ended up having to do was hit this with a heat gun for about you know, 10 minutes or so, not 10 minutes, but maybe two minutes or so to get it soft, stuff this in there. And then when it cooled, it was, you know, made to size, it worked just perfectly. The reason I'm doing this with just pins is because I know these motors can be a little bit torquey, and I wanted this to be the failure point, not 
anywhere near here. I didn't want to strip out any of these teeth on the uh, deflector. So I'd rather have every, you know, these pins or the plastic fail here so that I don't have any broken teeth here. So again, that's, you know, the, the wiring just goes up into the box that I mentioned and that's how that's connected. For the chute, as I mentioned, I had to replace the hinge on here. So all I did was go back to the hardware store. I picked up this, um, it's really just angle iron. You can buy this in like five foot lengths for, I don't know, 10 bucks or so. Um, and just made it to size so that I could hook this uh, linear actuator on here. <coughs> the trick was bending this, as you can see here, bending it so that I get the right angle so that this moves uh, the, the way it should. And then on the bottom side, this is you know just some 90 degree, 90 degree uh, 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 brackets that again I picked up at the local hardware store. You'll notice that the actuator is mounted, well, I guess you'll say upside down. Uh, this is rated, according to Amazon, it's rated for outdoor use. However, um, I didn't want to have to worry about water or dirt or anything getting between the cylinder and the, and the body. So I mounted it upside down so that gravity would work with me. So I, you know, it's, you know, if it gets wet, great. You know, it, it's, there's nothing on the top that's really going to do anything. Um, it's all, you know, any gravity is going to help me. So no, hopefully no water should get in here. No dirt should get in here and everything should work. So again, run through the electrical system one more time. Output from the stator. If you have, and you know, again, this is a Tecumseh engine. If you have a different brand of engine that has a light, you most likely have some form of output that you can steal from uh, from that. So uh, just you know, be be aware of that. But again, you've got your stator output going up the frame into the box. The other end is grounded uh, or is is tied into the frame through uh, this screw that holds the box in place. So I'm you know, double dipping on the purpose there. Uh, from there, the, it goes through a rectifier to convert the AC coming out of the engine to DC. On the output side of the rectifier is a capacitor to smooth out the DC circuit so you don't have it bouncing and you, it will prevent the lights from flickering. Um, and then it goes into these switches. Uh, these I picked up, they were like 15 bucks a pop from on Amazon or something like that. Uh, this on off for the light was about $5 at the local hardware store. So uh, all that power goes through these switches to the uh, respective components. So again, the, the LED light, the side to side motion of the chute and the up and down motion of the chute. Um, this I picked up at the, at the scrap yard for 10 bucks. Um, they're pretty cheap and they, you, you know, easy to replace. Um, this is 3 8 inch rod with some connectors here to get to, to couple the uh, the motor, the window motor to the shaft. Um, I'm reusing the existing uh, coupling for the side to side motion. This is a linear actuator from Amazon. Uh, and I will have the links to all this stuff posted in the video description. So if you want to check it out there, um, you know, just check there. Um, yeah, and uh, the brackets to hold this on and, and that's about it. Uh, I have yet to use this. This is brand new. The, this light I had, but it's not really bright at all. This in, old incandescent, it, it worked well enough for its time, but um, yeah, it's on, on, you know, out with the old and in with the new, and this thing is super, super bright. I'm, I'm really excited to have this so I can actually see what I'm doing in a dark here. Um, but yeah, I will, I'm going to post the uh, schematics for the electrical system uh, right about now, so uh, hopefully this helps you. Um, and good luck and have a good day.